it's the value of x that we are to decode for this given logarithmic equation. We have the logarithm of x to the base of 3 is equal to 3 minus the logarithm of the quantity 2x minus 3 to the base 3. Now, before we start applying uh, laws, uh, properties, uh, theorems of logarithm in order for us to decode and solve the value of x that will satisfy this equation, let us try to isolate all the terms with logarithms or all logarithms on one side of the equation so that we could apply properties that benefit them later. So we are going to add both sides by the logarithm of 2x minus 3 to the base of 3 so that all logarithms will appear on the left-hand side of the equation. So we'll have it something like this. When we add logarithm of 2x minus 3 to the base of 3, we'll have this form. We'll have here the logarithm of x to the base of 3. Then we will add a logarithm of the entire 2x minus 3 to the base 3. And when you add the same on both sides, the right hand side will just be 3 because the minus logarithm of 2x minus 3 to the base 3 will become 0. From here, since the logarithms are now found on one side of the equation and that their bases are the same, we can now combine them into one expression. Here, we are adding two logarithms of the same base. So we are going to use this concept, property, or theorem. If you have a logarithm of a coefficient a to the base b, and you are to add another logarithm, let's say to c, to the base b, same base, you can just combine them into one expression, and you will have here the logarithm of the product of the coefficients a and c, to the same base b. Again, do not forget this is only possible if the logarithms have the same bases. And this is in connection to the item here since the bases are 3. So when we combine them into one expression or logarithm to the base 3, you simply multiply the coefficients x and 2x minus 3. So you're going to multiply them. And this is still equal to 3. Now, before we multiply these coefficients, we can apply the transformation of a logarithm, let's say logarithm of a to the base b, when it is given to be equal to, let's say, y, because x is already there, we can transform this into an expression where we have the same base b, y is your exponent, and this is equal to the coefficient of your original logarithm, a. With this, this is our base. So you have 3. And since the entire logarithm is equal to 3, that would be your exponent. This would be equal to the product of x and 2x minus 3. This is the transformation of a logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. But this still to be simplified, so we can just express this as another equation. We'll have here 27 is equal to the product of this by the distributive property. So you have 2x squared minus 3x. Okay? So we are expecting to have a quadratic equation. Let's try to move 27 here. And by symmetric property, you will have this form. 2x squared minus 3 x, again, we're moving 27 here, minus 27, leaving this side 0, and by symmetric property, you will have this form here. Now that we have this, we are solving for x, so we will solve x here in terms of a quadratic form. And since it's a quadratic form, we can factor it using AC way. AC means you multiply A, which is 2 times your c, which is negative 27. You will get a result of negative 54. Now, there are a lot of factors for negative 54, but only one pair of which, when added, will result to negative 3. And that factor, or the set of factors, or a pair of factors, is negative 9 and 6. Negative 9 times 6 is negative 54. 
negative 9 plus 6. This is your middle term here. This would mean, moving here, the factors of this quadratic equation is a, a set or a pair of binomial expression. Let me just still write here 2x and 2x here as well. Now, don't be confused because 2x times 2x is 4x squared, but this is 2x squared because something will be simplified later. You will have here minus 9. You will have here plus 6, the coefficients in your AC way method. This is equal to 0. Again, when you multiply this, it will not return to the same quadratic equation because 2x times 2x, again, is 4x squared. The inner terms, negative 9 times 2x is negative 18x. 2x times 6 is 12x, so you'll have minus 6x. So it's not negative 3x. And of course, negative 9 times 6 is not negative 27. But you could actually simplify this further, divide it by 2. Therefore, your factors would be 2x minus 9. And you will have another factor, divide by 2, divide by 2. You will have x plus 3 equal to 0. When you check these two factors, 2x times x is 2x squared. Inner, negative 9 times x, negative 9x. Outer, 2x times 3 is 6x. So negative 9x plus 6x, you will have negative 3x. And negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. Now, we could now separate these two factors according to the zero factor or zero product property, which tells us that this is equal to zero if one of the factors or both of them is equal to zero. So let's solve the two values of x. Here, you will have 2x is equal to positive 9. So x is 9 halves. 9 halves. The other value, x is negative 3. So there are two values for the value of x, but do we accept both of them? Please bear in mind that the value of any coefficient here, let's say this coefficient a here, when you have a logarithm, should be positive in nature because there's no logarithm of a negative number. This means if we are going to substitute negative 3 here, in the original equation, and even here, both of them will be undefined. This would mean negative 3 as the value of x is not possible here, and we are only going to accept 9 halves as our final answer. You could also verify this by substituting to our equation and see that it satisfies the given. We have now decoded the value of x and its 9 halves for this given logarithmic equation. That's mission accomplished.